The Quran is building the link and the connection, the direct connection between man and universe. Besides something else that we, we need to understand about the life of the Prophet before revelation, the Prophet, peace be upon him, before the message of Islam, we see him someone who is contemplating, someone who is reflecting, something, someone who is asking the big questions about life. So we did not, from the early beginning, before the message of Islam, he did not actually follow what was being in the, Muslim, in the Meccan society at that time, what was known, and everybody as a habit was practicing it, the idol worship. Why? Because he questioned. So here, as we can mention and we can see, there is always in the Quran, in the Quran and in the life of the Prophet, the a process of a questioning. As a matter of fact, if anyone, any individual, any society wouldn't start with this process of questioning, especially when it comes to the big questions in life, in anyone's life, then for sure there is no reflection. There is no contemplation. There is no thinking or using mental capabilities. If there is no th nothing like this, within the absence of all these, uh, I would say, all these activities, mental activities, then no one can think about civilization. And that was exactly what was happening in Arabia at that time. A very clear and obvious Example for this, the worshipping of idols or paganism. It was quite well known and acceptable at the same time among Arabs and among other nations around them. Why? Not because they were convinced with this worship. Not because they believed that these idols can do anything about them or can afford anything for them. Despite of that, people in Arabia especially in Mecca and the other tribes around Mecca, they were following this worship and accepted it for years, for generations. Why? Because there was an absence for what? Asking or questioning anything. Things which I have inherited from my parents and my tribes, I would never ask about. Even if they are contradict, all the other senses, yes, even if they are contradicted. So here there is a problem. There is a problem rooted within the Arabian society before the message of Islam. What was it, people? They did not ask questions at all. They just imitate blindly. They just keep on following their parents and their fathers and grandparents and forgetting about asking questions especially when it comes to their relation with God, with the universe, with the big questions in my life. Because all these big questions, as we will see today, they are the key for what? For everything in life, including building civilization. When it comes to the individualistic level or when it comes to the society level. So last time we mentioned it's because of this the Quran is started with the word read. So if you would like to argue whether Quran or Islam is a religion or is actually a religion, but at the same time is motivating people to establish civilization, because many people, they assume when it comes to the concept of religion, religion has nothing to do with civilization. Religion is just something, certain teachings that regulates my life regulate my relation with God, um, with other people, and that's it. Has nothing to do with science, has nothing to do with civilization, has nothing to do with other aspects of life, like economic perspective, political uh, perspectives, etc., etc. But when I come to the Quran, I see another story. I see a religion which actually interferes in every single aspect and components of my life, 
Why? Because it is started from the early beginning by asking the questions. Besides the Prophet, peace be upon him, as we said, he was the one who is asking the questions in cave of Hera. Now let us move to something else. Is it just asking the questions and that's it? No. You don't actually imagine what is the most thing mentioned in the Quran. Some people, the Quran is the book, as we all know, the holy book for Muslims, for Islam. So you may think the most thing which has been mentioned in the Quran supposed to be the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, or worship Allah, or uh, ibadat, different aspects of worship like prayer, siyam, fasting, etc., etc. We don't see that. Then what is the most mentioned subject in the Quran? What is the most important thing mentioned in the Quran? The most important thing is the creation of the universe. Imagine, the creation of the universe and how people and humans supposed to deal with this. And the question is still there, why? Why again and again the reflection on creation of the universe? Why we have tens of verses in the Quran talking about the creation of the universe? Talking about the process of certain mental capabilities and utilizing these <coughs> mental capabilities. Why do we find such? Because if, unless you ask, unless you discuss, you won't be actually up to the level of the Quran. Because the level of the Quran is getting us, us up and up. We are uh, upgrading our capabilities when we are reading the Quran. As a human, not necessarily you believe or you don't believe, but you are here in front of a book which is actually challenging your capabilities asking certain questions and pushing you to ask and to think and to ut uh, utilize your mental capabilities. So here it comes the question, but sometimes without answer. As I said before, the nature of the Quranic text in many places asking you questions but never giving you the answer. No direct answer. Why? Because you need to think. You need to find out. You see, you need to use your mind. You need to reflect. You need to investigate sometimes. You need to look here and there and find certain evidence and then to conclude that this is the answer. You see the point? So this is what we call it in the Quran, thinking, tabassur, ta'amul, reflection. Why? Because this is the Quran. The Quran which is actually giving us the opportunity to use our mental capabilities, which is for sure the first and the most important thing we have as a human. You see the point? I am thinking, then I am alive. I don't think, I just imitate and I follow others blindly, then I am not a human being. Even if these whom I do follow, they are my parents or my tribes. You see the point here? So let us just focus on some of these verses and see how the Quran is starting with people to think and to use their mind. First of all, in, in many other ayat, rather than Surah Al-Alaq, after Surah Al-Alaq, because Surah Al-Alaq, as we mentioned, the first verses in Surah Al-Alaq revealed at the beginning, from the early beginning, uh, in the Quran, in Mecca, uh, during that time. So after that, we see the following verses and chapters in Quran starting some sort of war, fighting, but against what? We may think that the Quran, the Quran would fight against idols, the Quran would fight against people of Mecca or people who do not believe in the message of uh, Islam. That's what we expect. But we don't see this fight at all. Then the Quran is fighting whom? All these verses. You may write it down, highlight it in your textbook. Against ignorance. 
and affirmed from the early beginning. Imagine, affirmed what? The importance of education, reflection, and wisdom. So the fight was totally against what? Ignorance. Why ignorance? Not idol worship. You see, yeah? You see the beginning, because what we expect, Islam is a religion. And the first and the most important thing is Tawheed, isn't it? Believing in the oneness of God. So we may expect that the first thing the Quran would fight is anything would contradict Tawheed, which is simply idols worship. We don't see this from the beginning. But what is what comes for first? What comes first? Fighting against ignorance or jahil or jahiliya. Why? Because of what? Because if you we have these high levels of ignorance or jahiliya, then for sure we will have idol worship. We will have different different types of worshiping. It's not necessarily idol worship only. Why? Because there is a very high level of ignorance. So fight is supposing to start with what? With ignorance or idol worship? No, with ignorance in general. Why? Because the main and the most important reason or factor behind worshiping anything rather than Allah, the creator of this universe, is ignorance, nothing else. You see the point? So you start from within. You don't start from something which is outside. Worshiping idol is just indication. For what? For the ignorance. You see the good, the good uh, physician or the good doctor, he is the one who investigates why. Not giving Panadol just because you have fever and forget about the factor behind having fever or starting fever. If he is really good, okay, he would give you Panadol. But for sure, he will go for further investigation to examine and to decide what is the real factor behind this. Because this is not the problem. Having fever is just indicating something, that there is something wrong. Infection, something else, whatever it is. So it can be said, the same thing can be said here. Worshipping idol is just indication. For what? For a problem. What was the problem? Jahiliya or ignorance. So what you are supposed to do here? To fight ignorance. To go against ignorance. That's what the Quran started with. Was it a quite a strong and we, would, we may say crucial Battle? For sure. Why? Because everything around the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Mecca was going against him. People were quite ignorant, yes. It's not because of uh, uh, they, they, they would not be able to write or to read. It's not because of this. This is just one aspect. Then what is the real factor behind it? they were unable or paralyzed their mental capabilities. This is the problem. This is the main problem here. So the Quran started to focus on this. Focusing on what? On the problem. What was the problem? Ignorance, paralyzing one's mental capabilities. For or throughout the 23 years over which the Quran was actually revealed by all majors, starting with the word read and, of course, starting again and again to focus on reflection, on asking, on a questioning. Sometimes, as I said, never giving the answer. You will find the answer. You ask, you investigate. You collect evidence, you try to find out, you discuss certain things, but for sure, never to give you a ready answer for everything, because this is means another aspect or another perspective of paralyzing your mental capabilities, isn't it? So you can imagine today, why do we have certain problems in the educational system? 
Because in many cases in the educational system, in different subjects, we give you the question, we give you the answer. You see? So we are not actually giving you the opportunity to find out what is the answer. You need to investigate for sure. You need to read in the library. Yes. You need to consult some other resources for sure. Why? To exercise your mental capabilities. To Why? Because unless you do this exercise, at certain time you will find yourself that you are not using your mental capabilities and as if you don't have them. It's just like any physical exercise, you know? You don't use it, you lose it. Simply. You don't use it, you lose it. So you need to use these mental capabilities, yes. Then the Quran, the message of the Quran, the Quran is talking about religion. He is focusing on this, yes. Why? Because unless you have certain or you reach with people for a certain level of education and awareness, you won't be able to understand the Quran. You won't be able to message the, uh, to understand the message of the Quran and to interact with the message of the Quran. So in order, one of the terms and conditions to interact with the message of the Quran, to use your mental capabilities. See how many ayat talking about this and are the human be, uh, uh, beings to use and to develop and operate their various mental and sensory capabilities. Many ayat. One of these ayat, for example, in Surah Al-Hujurat. Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating this fact. About whom? About those who do not believe. Not because they didn't believe who they worship idols. No. As I said before, starting from the root, starting from the factor. Why? Never journeyed about the earth, letting their hearts gain wisdom, causing their ears to hear, and then it's not their eyes that have become blind, but a blind have become the hearts that are in their breasts. Innaha la ta'mal absar, walakinnaha ta'mal qulubu allati fi sudur. Well, let us stop on this ayah. So the Quran is telling us that it's not about being blind because they have certain problems in their eyes. Their eyes is six over six. Nothing wrong with it. Then what is it? What is it? What is next? What does this mean? It means when I see something, supposing I am reflecting on the universe. Okay? So I am seeing something here. When I see something, I have to go further and ask myself another question after that. Why? What? For what? Because it's not just seeing. That was exactly, by the way, what the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was doing in Cave Hira. He was looking, he was seeing everything, the horizon in front of his eyes. He was asking the questions. How come this magnificent universe created for nothing, no purpose behind creation? No purpose behind that. Nothing after the creation. It can't be. What about those people who do not believe? They are not going further. You ask them, for example, see, mashaAllah, subhanAllah, how this universe, how the sky, how it, and they say, yeah, but it's okay. It's just like, like any other day. Okay. So like any other day, it means that we don't think about it. No, we don't, we don't need to. You see? So when they reach this level, the Quran is telling us that It's all about the heart. What does it mean, the heart? The heart or the mind or the heart and the mind in the terminology, in the Quranic terminology, means that they are not using their mind. They are not asking a question. And this is the problem. Another ayat, another ayat or another verses which in many places, as I said in the Quran, you will be amazed, honestly. If you just think for a second that the most, the most mentioned topic in the Quran is the reflection on the universe. Why? Because this is the key. For faith, for faith, and tawheed, and civilization. 
see the point? So in some other ayat, because there are many verses, Surah al Nisa, even uh, including, of course, uh, uh, Medinian surahs or chapters, uh, chapters which have been revealed uh, in Medina, not only in Mecca at the beginning for 13 years, no, after that. Surah al Hujurat, Surah al Hajj, Surah al Ma'idah, Surah al Nisa, Surah al Baqarah, the second chapter, Surah al Fatiha. So all these surahs talking about, yes. And something else, you don't imagine it. The more you want to be close to Allah, the more you need to focus on this, on using your mental capabilities and utilizing full capabilities all the time in all situations by all means. That's why we see in the Quran, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ يَتَدَبَّرُونَ يتفكرون يتدبرون يتبصرون يسمعون what does it mean full mental capabilities you need to use them all if you don't use them they will be paralyzed and what is the danger of being paralyzed in that case you will be far from God why and how because your faith will be missing a lot of components there why? Because faith actually is getting stronger and stronger when it is what? When it is based on scientific levels like this, utilizing mental capabilities. That's why it has been mentioned by one of uh, the Orientalists, her name is Laura, mentioned in your textbook, that the Quran, see, see how, what was her statement. She said, thanks to Islam, Thanks to Islam, as we mentioned earlier, we have many neutral and objective orientalists, not only in history, but in our contemporary times as well. They studied the Quran, they studied Islam, and they concluded certain conclusions based on scientific methods or methodologies. Why? Because they were objective. And we will see later on how the Quran is promoting objectivity. Promoting objectivity. What does it mean? It means that when I am dealing with something, I am leaving aside my emotional feelings. But for sure, I would focus on, <coughs> focus on certain scientific <coughs> methods and information. So she said, thanks to Islam, all forms of paganism were vanquished. And people's perceptions about universe and re religion were liberated from all deformation. Liberated. Why? Because ignorance was a prison, was actually getting people out of the context. Out of what? Out of using their mind. The human being began to realize his stature and true nature when he pondered what Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said in the Quran. So the message of using and utilizing mental capabilities is not brought up just by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but by all messengers of God from the early beginning, from the time of Abraham, peace be upon him, father of messengers of God? Yes. Why? It has been mentioned in Surah Al-An'am, for example. Surah Al-An'am, we have a dialogue, mental dialogue, a very high level of intellectual dialogue between whom? Abraham, peace be upon him, messenger of Allah, and his nation, his people, his relatives, including his uncle. Why? His uncle was actually the one who is in charge for making idols out of mud, out of whatever they made, but he is the one. So he, he, he is actually making idols and selling them for his people. So people of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, in his village, they were respecting his father. And the first thing would come to the mind of anyone that Abraham would follow his steps, steps of his father or uncle and respecting at least these idols. What was happening? 
throughout this idol, uh, uh, dialogue, as the, the Quran is telling us, Prophet Ibrahim started asking them questions, as I said before. The most important thing for reaching the truth, asking the questions, using your mind. So he started to ask them. Now look at these idols. Do you think they can actually do anything for themselves? And then they stopped for a second and said, we are not very sure. They were quite sure, <laughs> but they did not actually want to use their mind. So what did he do? He did some sort of experiment. He decided one day, while they were out celebrating certain occasions, to come to the place, certain place for worshiping idols in their village and starting to break all these idols. Stones made out of, out of stones, so he was breaking them. And then when they came back, they found that, what happened? And then they started to ask, oh, it is for sure Ibrahim. Why? Because he was known at that time that this, this young man, he is man of trouble. He was the one who is causing them a lot of troubles. Why? Asking them questions. And they don't want anyone to ask them a question. Why? Because it's better not to ask. No questions, no. not using a uh, mind. This is the best thing. Okay. So they run to Ibrahim and ask him, Oh, Ibrahim, what did you do? And then Ibrahim said to them, and he was very smart. His answer was very smart and clear. Why don't you just go to them and ask them, especially the one who is there and nothing wrong with him, the big one, the big idol, the master of the other idols. Why don't you just go to him and ask him what happened? And for sure he would tell you what happened because he knows. Or why don't you just ask him why you actually didn't defend the other idols and stop what Ibrahim was doing. It's quite reasonable. Then they stopped for a minute and they said, well, Ibrahim, you know that they are not talking, of course, and they don't talk. He said, okay, they don't talk, we can understand it. But they don't protect themselves as well? This is what we can't understand it. And then they stopped for a minute, you see, starting to use their mind. And then they said, it seems you are right. Imagine why they started to think that he is right. Because that was the second, for just a second, they used their mind. They liberated their minds because their minds were sent to prison. Prison of what? Prison of ignorance and the blind imitation. You see? So here they said, yes, yeah, we think you are right. And then they said, then he said to them, Ibrahim, see how the Quran is telling us to initiate dialogue. You remember when I said, you can't actually impose faith on anyone. It's not acceptable in the Quran. What is the way? What is the best way? Start dialogue, discussion, asking questions, and never, never try to touch that circle of freedom, freedom of choice, freedom of religion, because it has been guaranteed by Allah. So they said, then he said to them, then if they are unable to protect themselves, how you come to them and pay a lot of money and gold and ask them for help and protection. In many occasions, you people come to these idols, give a lot of money and, and golden coins, and then say, oh, please protect me from this, from that. Please give me, you know, whatever I am asking. I want, I, I, do, I want to get married. I want to get this. I want to be rich. I want, okay, if they can't do anything to themselves, how they are going to help you? And then they realized how they were far from 
reasoning. Far from the truth. The truth is in front of them, but they didn't see it. Simply because they did not use their mental capabilities. That was just took one second, unfortunately, a few seconds, and then they came back and said, you, Ibrahim, we will burn you alive. The problem was not with Ibrahim. The problem was with what? The mind. Why? Why they actually rejected them? If they confessed at that time that this is the truth, I do confess, yes, I was wrong. Then what happened after that? What happened? It's not easy for many people, many people, to overcome the past, to overcome what is around them. Their family, the authority of their family, the authority of their tribe, the authority of their past, the authority of their habits. Because we people, we are so many times, we, we realize that these habits are supposed to be stopped at certain time, but we don't have the energy and the ability and the courage to stop ourselves from this, from continuing in practicing certain bad habits. So the <laughs> idol's worship was bad habit, it is. So they came back again and they said, the best thing to do is to destroy Ibrahim. Why Ibrahim did not do anything? Because Ibrahim is the one, is be upon him, is the one who is telling them to use their mind. And is it that hard? It's quite hard to use their mind. See the point? This is the Quran. So even when it comes to stories of other messengers, the Quran is focusing again on mental capabilities. Telling, and, and in other occasions actually, in other chapters, the Quran is telling us about Ibrahim himself. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was looking for his God for the Creator, the Quran is telling us. How he was talking to himself, how he was asking the questions to reach the truth. Who created this universe? What does this mean? It means that the Quran is actually promoting the questioning. Even when it comes to faith, actually it starts with faith. Because your faith if it is not starting through questioning, then you will inherit your faith. And if this would happen, then the effect, the influence, won't be that strong. And at the same time, you are not actually using your mental capabilities, which is totally wrong. So what is one of the best worships or ibadat in the Quran? Contemplation. Pondering. In signs of creation, khalq, of the universe, and in signs of or ayat or verses in the Quran. Why the Quran? Because Quran is, is showing me how to relate. Quran is showing me how to start, is building the foundation between what? For the relationship between the universe and the human. Is it important? It is. Why? Because I don't, as we said before, I am unable to see God, to witness him. But I do witness his creation. What is his creation? Me, myself, and the universe. So the more I contemplate, the more I ponder on these signs, the more or the easiest I reach him, reach the truth. You see the point? One of our biggest problems today, what is it? We don't look, we don't reflect, we don't enjoy the universe, isn't it? Enjoy it, wallah, enjoy it. It's, it's one of the most important gifts and actually it's one of the, the, the biggest gifts in this world. Look at it, see it. Look around, give yourself opportunity to open windows in front of your eyes and hearts. Because there is a link, direct link between eyes and heart, as the Quran is mentioning, by the way. This Quran is a book of medicine. 
No. Is Quran a book of geography? Or astronomy? Or what? Or geology? No. It's all about humanity and universe. It's all about knowing yourself. It's all about guiding your soul. It's all about providing you with certain directions to see the answer for your questions. This is the point. So the Quran is keep on telling us about the creation. At the same time, Quran is not telling people that you are as it has been mentioned in our contemporary, and this is very important, very significant point, that you are the master of nature. Because this term has been used in, in many places in our contemporary civilization. Master of universe, master of nature. We are not masters of nature. Then what? Because we and nature are just the slaves of God, the one who created. Then what is the nature and the universe? It's just a tool to be used to do what? To finish our mission, to fulfill our task on this earth, nothing else. You see the point? So when I am dealing with the universe here and the nature, <coughs> I will deal with what? <coughs> with respect. You see? Not feeling that, OK, I am the master. I can destroy this. I'll destroy that. No, without arrogance. Because I'm not supposed to be arrogant here at all. I am not a master of anything. I won't be able, if it is not with Allah permission, and that's what the Quran is telling us, Sakhara. What does it mean, Sakhara? He's the one who is giving you the permission to use whatever you are using. Isn't it? Including myself, including myself. I won't be able actually to move my hands unless I have the permission from what? From Allah. You get the point? So it's not because of me. So everything I am using here, it's not because I am the master. No. It's because I have been getting permission from the one who created them. So yes, the universe around me is actually helping me to fulfill my task and my assignment. Nothing else. Otherwise, all other animals, for example, would be, and they are, stronger than human beings. Isn't it? But we see how a human being is controlling them. Because of what? Permission of Allah. Almighty. We will continue next time. Thank you very much. See you on Tuesday.